Good morning and a blessed Easter to all of you. Um, uh, we were we, we met at the park a few weeks ago to pray for uh, for collision direction of collision church. They prayed for me, and we were trying to decide whether to meet as a group and go to a church together, being it was Easter. But I decided not to for this reason only, because we take a special offering every Sunday, and today's offering is for Dawn, and I did not want to neglect. If we went, we wouldn't have a Sunday message. We would not have taken a, an offering for Dawn, and I did not want to neglect that. Good morning, Ambrosia. Patty, hopefully with you. Have, blessed Easter to you, too. And to that little guy, to Everest. I bet he's growing, isn't he? Uh, so that's why we're having this video message today. And I'm sure that not everybody feels comfortable yet going to, uh, to churches. Uh, most of them are still meeting outdoors because they can't sing indoors. Uh, so anyway, welcome to, uh, to our collision message. I want to thank those of you that stay loyal to, uh, to these videos. Uh, those of you that are committed to, to collision church, uh, appreciate it. Been a long year, hasn't it? Been a long year. So, uh, so thank you for staying committed. And I want to thank many of you outside of collision that watch these videos. There's so many of you that, that, are committed to them, uh, give generously financially to the to the special offerings. Uh, appreciate you also. Uh, I pray that as a result of all these videos, that your faith is growing. What do I say all the time? Romans ten seventeen. Your faith grows as a result of hearing God's word. Morning, James. Trust Pinky's with you. Morning, Shirley. So loyal. Um, blessed Easter to uh, to all of you. So uh, let me open with a prayer. Father, I thank you for, for the people that have stayed committed to Collision Church, uh, stayed committed to these videos uh, today, Easter Sunday, a special day, God. Special day that the world celebrates, but I'm not sure that most of the world really understands what they're celebrating. So I pray God has share this message that you would lay it on the hearts of people that 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 don't really know what each is about, that maybe they would be drawn to this video and they would learn something about you, God. So lay it on their hearts. Amen. Morning, Veronica. Morning, Will. Morning, Marcy. Um, as you know, I don't have to tell you, it's Easter Sunday. It also happens to be my son Aaron's birthday today. It's an honor to have his birthday fall on the same day that Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, the whole world, the whole world, especially America, celebrates this day, Easter. Just like they celebrate Christmas, they celebrate Easter. Good morning, Debbie, Mike, boys. Good morning to you guys. Um, uh, however, it's the way they celebrate it, okay? They, they celebrate it with, uh, with Easter bunny and with egg hunts and with family gatherings, and those are all important. Those are things that we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing that. We're going to have... Uh, uh, an Easter hunt for the kids. They, they love that. I love to watch them doing that. My wife and I, especially my wife, have been packing little plastic eggs uh, all week. Uh, we're going to have family over since my son is here. His, my son, my brother is here staying with us. Uh, one of his daughters and her two boys are going to be coming over to visit with us today. So, so it's a great day to celebrate. Um, but, but few really celebrate the true meaning of Easter. Few, few really understand the true meaning of Easter. Uh, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the most precious day, the most single event that changed everything along with Christmas. Christmas was Jesus coming into the world, or should I say God coming into the world in the form of a human called Jesus. And then Easter is that same Jesus suffered and dying on a cross, put in a grave, and then coming out of that grave, conquering death, conquering death. Now, now, let's just talk about that because death is very final and it's feared. It's feared by, by, by most people. Uh, even Christians fear death. Uh, it's not something that people look forward to, uh, but no one can escape death. No one has escaped death. Uh, the wealthiest people in America uh, cannot escape death. They, they cannot buy 
life. Uh, the most famous people in the world, known by everyone, still die. They can't escape death. One of my, one of the people that I grew up with and when I was in the army, had every one of his albums, Elvis Presley. He's in the grave. He's in the grave. And I know this is morbid, but there's nothing left to him. It's dust. He's just dust. He's just dust. Now, we could watch him on, on past videos and movies, etc., but he... He died. He's, he's dead. He's died. He has died. Uh, you and I, you and I cannot escape death. We cannot escape death. It, it just seems so final, so final to most people. One of grace, uh, most, most final. Uh, we hear of famous people dying every year. Uh, my, my brother, who's dying of cancer right now, Every once in a while, hears of a famous person that died. He said, did you, did you hear just so-and-so just died of lung cancer? The same thing I have. A famous person that died of the same thing that he's dying of. No one, no one escapes death. And many die even at young ages. So life is very fleeting. Here today and gone tomorrow. Now I realize that that we, 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 we look at this life as just being so important, and it is. Our, our life on earth is extremely important, too. What we do in this life determines what's going to happen in our next life. But to unbelievers, to unbelievers, it just is so final. It's just so final. Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Gloria. Happy Easter. It is just so final. It's no wonder that unbelievers fear death. Uh, let me just read here in Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. It says, Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. People all the way through history have feared death. And the, and, he's, and the devil had a hold on him. The devil had a hold on him of fearing death. And that, but, but, but then uh, along, along, comes, along comes Jesus. Along comes Jesus. And he said he freed those who all their life have been held in slavery by their fear of death. He, he's freed us. He's freed us from the fear of death. Now, has he? Has he freed you from the fear of death? Oh, I hope so. I hope so. I, I, I hope I hope that you can be on your deathbed one day and not have the fear of death, knowing what Easter was all about. No, knowing with certainty what Easter is really all about. Um, for, for those of us who believe, uh, death is really just the beginning. It's the beginning. It's the end of our earthly life, and it's the beginning of our eternal heavenly life. Remember the song, Imagine? I can only imagine. Um, I, I can only imagine what my mom and my brother who died last year, I can only imagine what it's like for them. I, I, I can only imagine. I can only imagine what they're witnessing right now. I, we can only imagine. We, we can't see it. We can only imagine it. But let, let me just read the words to that to the song. You all know the song. Uh, I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine, surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in awe of you, just be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah, or will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine, I can only imagine. Oh. 
Oh, I, I wish that OJ and Sheila were here right now singing that song, or Paul and Jamie singing that song right now. But, but we can only imagine. So let's hear what God has to say about what Easter is really all about, okay? What is Easter really all about? Now, before I get into it, it's okay to celebrate Easter, like I said, with your, if you have children and grandchildren, with uh, my, my daughter every year dresses up as the Easter bunny. She has the outfit and dresses up. Now the oldest girl has kind of figured out already that, no, that's, in the, and the other ones are starting to question it, but they get excited about it. And there's nothing wrong with all of that, as long as we understand what the real meaning of Easter is. So let's have God, let's allow God to, 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 to tell us what, what Easter is, is about, okay? In Daniel 12, 2, the, the, he prophesies. Daniel, the, the whole book of Daniel is prophecy, and it's, a lot of it's prophecy about the end times. Uh, 12, 2, he says this, Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth, people that have died, people that have died and they just turned to dust now on the earth, will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Prophecy, prophesy that those in the grave will rise some to everlasting life and some to everlasting contempt. Matthew 22, 29, and 32. The, the, let me just read the, the first, this uh, verse 23. It says, That same day the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him with a question. They didn't believe in the resurrection. So they asked Jesus this question. They said, in the Jewish law, when the when the oldest son dies and he's married, then the next son has to marry that his 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 his, his uh, spouse. Then if he dies, then the next one has to. And if he dies, the next one has to. They have to take care of the of the oldest son's wife. Uh, they have to they they have to marry her. So they so they asked him at the resurrection, uh, whose whose wife is it? At the resurrection, trying to trick Jesus. And Jesus says this, you are in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. At the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. But about the resurrection of the dead, have you not heard, read what God said to you? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of of the living. Jesus, our, our God is not a God of dead people in their graves. That, that's not who he's a, our God is a God of living, of the living. So, so Jesus, Jesus is telling them that the, the, there's no marriage in heaven. Now I've shared this with people before, just to kind of get a crisp, a glimpse of what this means. Um, you know, some of you are married, and boy, your spouse means the world to you. Um, you, you, you look forward. If if one of them died, you look for. I hear people say all the time, "Oh, why do you die and you get to be with your husband in heaven? Why do you die and you get to be with your wife in heaven?" And what Jesus is really saying is, "There's no, there's no marriage in heaven. It, it's beyond that." Remember where it says, your eye has not seen, your ear has not heard, it hasn't even entered your mind, the good things God has prepared for those who love him. You, you, you know marriage. You've experienced marriage. You've experienced that love. Heaven is so far above that, that marriage is insignificant because it's beyond all that. Now, that's hard to imagine. You all have loved ones. I mean, you, you hear me talk about my grandkids all the time. They, they mean the world to me. And, and yet, I have to understand, and you have to understand, that heaven is beyond, the, it is more glorious than your relationship with your spouse or your children or your grandchildren. It is way beyond that. Way beyond that. You, you haven't even thunk it yet. Now, is that something to look forward to? Oh my gosh. Just, just that alone. Just knowing that alone. It's like, 
Why fear death when we have that to look forward to? Now, in, in Matthew uh, 27, 52, Jesus said this, uh, or the, no, Jesus, when, when Jesus died, when Jesus died, the things happened. The, the curtain to the temple was torn in two, which means that the, the curtain was, you were not allowed to enter into the Holy of Holies. Only the high priest could do that. And now that when Jesus died, that curtain was torn, meaning that we can act, we can go into the very presence of God. But but a lot of things happened when Jesus died, and this is, this is one of them. The tombs broke open, and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs, and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. Now, now listen to this now. The, the tombs broke open when Jesus died. And then when Jesus rose from the dead, they, they too came out of their tombs, and they appeared to many people. It's like God showing us what he's capable of doing. Dead coming out of the graves. It's like saying, hey, if I did it once, can I not do it again? That's what we have to look forward to. That's what, that's what Easter is all about. Jesus coming out of that, Jesus walking out of that grave. And holy people, people that had died walking, coming out of their, their graves. And if Jesus appearing to people, and these people that had come out of their graves appearing to people. Jesus conquered death. He conquered death. We have no more fear of death. Or we shouldn't have any more fear of death. John 5 28 and 29, Jesus says, Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good will rise to live, and those who have done evil will rise to be condemned. <sighs> it's a promise. It's a promise. This is with absolute certainty. This is going to happen with absolute certainty. If Jesus spoke it, it's going to happen. There's going to be a day, he says, when all will come out of their graves. Whew. Acts 24, 15. Paul, Paul knew this. Paul knew this. Let me read this in 24, 15. It says, and I have the same hope in God as these men, that though that there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. Paul said, I have that same hope. I have that same hope that there will be a resurrection of the good and the bad. And then in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, it tells us about this. Listen to this. Brothers, sisters, those of you watching this now, Lily, good morning. Shirley, good morning. We do not want you to be uninformed about those who have died or to grieve like the rest of people that have no hope. We don't want you to be uninformed and we don't want you to grieve like those that have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other 
with these words. No. Jesus is going to come again. And it says there will be some Christians that will be alive when Jesus comes again. They will have gone through the great first, the great tribulation, and they will still. But 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 God will raise the dead in Christ first. Now, can you imagine what that day is going to be like? I can only imagine Jesus coming down with all of his angels. Just that alone. Can you imagine what that's going to look like? And then. All of the dead, the millions and millions of people that have in the, that are in the grave, the, the millions of people coming out of the grave, out of the graves to meet the Lord in the air. Wow. Wow. That's the great rapture. That's the great rapture. And then Revelation 11 through 15, it gives us this picture. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it. Earth and the sky fled from its presence, and there was no place for them. This is, this is the great tribulation, the destruction of earth and the, and, the, and, and, the, and, and, all, and the sky. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead was judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what they had done. Then, then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, they were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the great judgment day. We will rise up out of our graves and then we will be judged. And then we will be judged. Now, how is all this going to happen? Well, let's read about it in 1 Corinthians. It says this first. But someone may ask, how are the dead raised? What kind of body will they come Oh, how's it? What do you mean we're going to come out of our graves? What do we mean we're going to come out of our graves? What is, what's going to happen? Verse 42. So it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is so imperishable, that's our bodies now that are perishable, that will die, is going to be raised imperishable. They will never die. Sown in dishonor, sinful bodies, Raised in glory, not capable of sinning. Sown in weakness, raised in power. If they're sown a natural body, it will also be raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Wow. We're, we're going to receive brand new bodies. We're going to receive grand new bodies that will live forever and ever and ever and ever. Perfect bodies. No more pain, no more suffering, no more dying. Oh my gosh. I hope you're grasping these promises. And, uh, and finally, let me, let me read this in, in verse 50 through 50. He says, I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Our bodies can't. Nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I'm going to tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed. Remember I said some will still be alive, but most will be dead. But we will all change in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the imperishable must clothe itself, or the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with, some, with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? 
There's no sting to death. Not for us who believe, because we have all of this to look forward to as a result of Jesus coming out of the grave. That's what Easter is all about. And Easter has given us these incredible promises. Now, now I know that our mind has a hard time grasping this. Most of us are going to go right back into the world and we're going to be concerned about our jobs and we're going to be concerned about our health and we're going to be concerned about our children and our grandchildren and all those things. But boy, don't lose sight of your future. Don't lose sight of your real future because what an incredible future God is giving us. Amen? Now, let me just share this. Because a lot of people say, okay, but but that's the end of the world. <laughs> Some people have been in the grave for thousands of years. Have they just been laying in the grave this whole time? My mom and my brother, they just laying in the grave waiting for the for the great resurrect for the for the great return of Jesus? And the answer is no, no, no. Let me real quickly we share this with you. And I've, and I've shared this with you many times in videos, but we have a body, but we also have a soul or a spirit. And and when our body dies, immediately our spirit leaves our body and our spirit goes to be with the Lord. Now, what is your spirit? Well, quickly, John, when he was in the Isle of Patmos, said that he was given visions. And it says that he, you know, he's standing on the island of Patmos or sitting, whatever he's doing there. And God takes his spirit and brings him to a mountaintop takes his spirit and brings him to the desert, takes his spirit and brings him into heaven to give him, show him all the different things in the future and the present. John's body is still there on Patmos, but his spirit is witnessing all those things. And the spirit comes back to his body and he's able to write everything that he saw. So your spirit, your spirit, remember it says, God is spirit. God is spirit. Angels are spirits. Demons are spirits. That's the real realm. That's the real realm. That's the godly realm. And when we die, our spirits go into that godly realm. And our spirits are with the Lord. And then when Jesus returns, then our bodies come out of the, our new bodies come out of our graves, reunite with our spirits to have a heavenly body now forever and ever in the presence of the Lord. You get it? Whew. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. You are going to rise. You will rise indeed. Amen? What a great day. What a great day Easter is. We're going to take our special offering today for dawn. I don't know how many of you got a chance to see what Dawn's, what she posts on, on Facebook, but what a ministry she has. And it just continues to grow and grow and grow and grow. They give out hundreds of meals each month. They give out hundreds of blankets to the homeless each month. Her and her little team, her and her little team, they don't quit. They don't quit. They just keep on keeping on. I've been doing it for years staying faithful for years, making sandwiches, making bags for the home. They care about them. And, and, and Jesus, Jesus cared about those kind of people. He cared about the poor and the down and the out. And Don does. We need to support her ministry in any way we can. So if you are able to give, you can go on the Collision Facebook page and you can, it's called Lily's Legacy. And you can give to her to support her ministry so she can keep on doing, she wants to do even more. She wants a building now. She's got an organization now that's given her all kinds of items to, to do. She, she, the ministry's growing and, and we're a part of that. We're a part of that growth. Even if, even if you don't get to go with her, your support makes you a part of her ministry. So if you can give, please give, please give. Gift, it's Lily's legacy. Uh, and then last week we took an offering for 
house of prayer for Sandeep's mom. We raised you know, close to nine hundred dollars. Uh, we're hoping that we can do that kind of support. And 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 if you go on the Collision Facebook page, you'll see it there where there's support for me. I thank those of you that that supported me last week. Uh, but I'm going to be I'm going to be raising my own support now to do ministry. Many people outside of Collision. Of, are coming forward to uh, to to support my ministry because I, I I hesitate taking anything away from from collision, especially from the special messages. I mean the special uh, uh, offerings that we take each 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 week each Sunday, I should say each week. Uh, but if you are been blessed by God financially and you're able to support me, I, all I can say is I humbly is thank you, thank you. I want to continue doing ministry as long as I can. Uh, and then if you've got prayer requests, you can give your prayer requests there. You've got a prayer team that prays diligently for you. Um, so with that being said, uh, have a happy and blessed Easter. Uh, Jesus has risen. He's risen indeed. We will rise. We will rise indeed. God bless you. There's going to be no children's message today because I know that Easter is just... I've already seen pictures of my grandchildren waking up to Easter baskets, all excited. Uh, I'm just going to take a break from the children's message this morning. Uh, but if the children are watching, make sure that you still acknowledge what today is all about. For you parents and grandparents, share a little bit with them so they get a little bit of glimpse of what Easter is about. Make sure they understand what it's all about. Just, just ask them, what, is, what does Easter mean? And let them tell you, okay? God bless you. Have a great Easter Sunday. Uh, and if you could support Don, boy, please do. Uh, let me close with a prayer. Father, thank you. Thank you for loving us so much that you came down to earth to die for us. Loving us so much that you came out of the grave. Giving us the incredible promise that we too, we too will come out of our graves. We will rise from the dead, the same way that Jesus rose from the dead. What an incredible promise, God. Thank you for giving us this day. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed Christmas, all of you. See you Monday with our daily devotion at 8 o'clock. Have a great, great Easter.